Hello everyone, it's Simon here with a review of Sigma Theory. Sigma Theory came out in early access last week, and the developer was very kind enough to send me across a copy to take a look at. Uh, the game, although it is in early access, is completely playable from start to end. The early access is more around balancing and refinements and adding more mechanics into the game. But what's here, actually, is pretty good for face value, and you can kind of see that this is already to an nth degree of polish already. The game is heavily detailed though and it basically if I was to try and sum it up in one sentence it would be if XCOM settings was taken into a pandemic and plague ink style game but it's all around taking over the world and making sure you don't enter a cold war and kill everyone. <laughs> That's kind of like the game in a nutshell and now I'm going to break down those mechanics throughout this review to try and hopefully help you understand and explain how the game works. You initially start as one of ten different countries and each one has its own trait and the idea is that you then get agents on your side to then go and infiltrate other countries, try and coerce other scientists to come and join your cause or take down the government or get them into such confusion that actually they'll be too busy sorting out their own problems whilst you continue to build up your own country so that it can then basically wage technical war out against the other countries as you go. There are several different ways that you can win in this game. One is uh, essentially getting enough scientists on your side so that you build up research points so that you can then get the Sigma Theory, the title of the game. This basically means that you will then have an extreme superpower that will allow you to take control of the world and basically lead. However, as you walk towards this, other countries will be doing the same itself. And this is where the diplomacy side of stuff and the kind of tactical espionage side of things kick in. Each game starts off with a turn, and your turn will be moving around your agents to these different countries and then engaging in different tasks. That task could be to get some recon on the area itself to find out what they're looking at in terms of researching different uh, technologies. It could be that you're looking at what agents and scientists are in their area. It could be that you actually want to acquire weapons so that you can then try and do some tactical espionage and steal some scientists away from them. Or it could be that you want to start hacking their database and their mainframes. Um, and that can kind of all take place with just one agent and you'll have initially four going at one time and you'll be moving around different countries. Um, there's no real need to have them all in the same place at the same time but they you can do so if you want to kind of target your resources to try and wear down one country at a time. The problem is is that all other nine countries will be doing the same to you or to each other and so you'll have a ranking board in the bottom right hand uh, left hand side that will give your ranking as to how close you are to achieving the sigma theory um, which puts you in a position of whether or not you're winning or losing. However, in order to achieve a lot of this, you'll be entering in a lot of diplomacy tactics with each country and you'll be able to arrange meetings with them so that you can then try and do trade deals and that could be offering pieces of your research in exchange for cash or um, lowering down their defences so that you can then tactically go in and steal someone without having drama. Um, it could be that you're going to swap scientists because you might be needing to um, get some research on a very specific thing that will then give you those extra points quicker so that you can then achieve the Sigma theory quicker. It could be that actually you're all busy so angry and hating each other that you need to lower down your alerts with each other because the way how you can lose this game and there's several ways of doing this but one of them is that you've got a doomsday clock up in the top middle section and each time that you basically annoy someone they get angry and you start moving closer to midnight which is when you're launching all that nuclear cold war on each other and cause drama. So you need to basically balance off this, I'm going to annoy you and steal your scientists or cause you drama, but then I need to placate you. But in order to placate you, I might have to give up all of these different resources or agents or scientists um, or pa just general power in order to pl placate you so that um, you don't then launch a nuclear war at me before I can win and dominate the world anyway. <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's that beautiful balance that works so well for Sigma Theory because there's so many different ways that you can tackle things. No one country feels particularly more powerful than the other. Each one is viable and I couldn't really see any balancing issues between them because it's all really your initial start as to whether or not your scientists or original um, agents can be like romanced um, away from fellow agents. Each agent and each NPC has its own backstory, its own sexuality, which I found quite interesting. Um, and you yourself, as your own playable character, have your own love interest. The problem is, is your own love interest will always be in a different country to you. So they'll get themselves into drama. And it could be that actually you want to get your husband or wife um, out from, say, some kind of democratic jail. But in doing so, you might cause upset to your own political parties. Or it could be that you move the <laughs> um, doomsday clock closer to midnight. So do you sacrifice your own love and relationship, but therefore cause political outrage? Up to you. You need to balance all of that as you go along. There is so much that you can dive into and do, but one of the more interesting things that I found was that when you then did actually either research or bribe or try and kidnap scientists so that they can then join your like fleet of people to keep researching and churning out these science points to get towards the Sigma theory, you enter into like XCOM Lite and it will chart out a journey that you go around a different um, city and what you'll have to do is basically do like a mini choose your own a narrative adventure to get yourself from beginning to end of these different messages uh, messages to or missions sorry to collect your scientists that you're trying to steal or extricate from the country itself now Depending on the stats of your agents, which will either be due to strength or due to um, brain power, you might want to choose different options depending on your agent. And that could work out good for you, it could work out bad for you. They can be killed, they can be captured. Um, and it, you can find yourself very quickly running at like one or two agents if you've ended up basically killing one agent and then trying to or getting one captured and then sending another agent to try and rescue your captured agent and then they die or something like that and you're like I've done really badly <laughs> um so yeah so you've got all of that going on and that's all just the aggressive side of stuff also you have the defensive side of stuff so whilst you're doing this to one of the other nine countries, the other nine countries could all in theory be piling themselves onto you. And thankfully the AI does seem to all target each other, which is quite good and very handy. Um, but spies come in and you'll need to try and work out who they are, what their kind of motives are, and how can you either stop them either by brute force or by arresting them and sending them back, foiling their issue. And you could try and take them in and capture them. And then you can interrogate them and use their own uh, like tactics to try and get more information or more intel. Or like do national bribes so that you lower the threat down in a different country. So that that then means that when you try and infiltrate and steal one of their scientists back, you'll have much less in terms of actual like fighting to do to win and get that scientist back again however you can push them too far and they'll all die and they won't survive the interrogation and that will increase all of the levels they'll then be angry with you they'll send more over and you'll be marching closer to doomsday so as the game continues on other signed uh, countries basically drop out of the sigma theory race so if someone basically falls too far behind like last place keeps getting eliminated they'll still have scientists that you can go in and pilfer and you can still have alert levels by how much you basically annoy them but they won't be in the sigma theory race so eventually you'll start basically getting down to three or four different countries left and that's where the game kind of takes on this really aggressive push um because then everything is much more um 
razor sharp so you'll be having many more spies coming into your areas which might mean you'll need to launch out drones it will also mean that um, you could in theory want to pilfer out all of the other countries until there's no uh, agents left and then you'll be busy basically in trades trades back and forth trying to steal agents but trying like to not push the clock closer to midnight very very difficult to do um, the other way how the Sigma Theory throws another curveball into it, and I told you this game was complicated, but in a good way, is that you also have to play by your own government's rules. So up on the top of the screen, next to the Doomsday Clock in the centre, on the left-hand side, you've got a percentage next to the UK flag, because I was playing as Great Britain, obviously. And this will go up and down depending on your actions. If you hit zero, they will fire you, quote unquote, kill you, uh, and get you out of the establishment. And that is also game over for you. However, usually there is always a trade off. So if you end up doing things that they want, you're giving away technology to everyone and then you'll basically be losing the race. So you're always playing this like back and forth but if you do get in favor with them they will support you with uh, sometimes more agents say if one gets locked up or killed they'll supply us an, ex an extra one for you to like come in and replace it it might be that the scientists will work faster for you um, so yeah you've got all of that and then there's also another layer that hides underneath and it's like a arms deal section that's going on elsewhere. So each country will also have um, like a 1% elitist group that will come in. And what it might mean is instead of sharing your technology with your own government, you might sell it off to some dirty dealers. But what that will do is it will then give you a percentage increase in the amount of technology that you can then farm in that specific area. So if you're thinking, oh God, I'm falling behind in, I don't know, the healthcare section, you could then decide that when you've then hit your next level of like level one of healthcare so that you can then gain points to get closer to Sigma Theory, you can then, instead of choosing to go with the government and win favour with them, sell it off to this like dirty offshore company who will then basically give you a boost of performance in the future. As I say, so many options, so many ways to play. Um, my first game of this went on for about three hours, if not four, before I kind of got to the end of it and was like, ah, I didn't even win. <laughs> um, but I did get into the final three. And then from there, I was kind of able to understand where I'd gone wrong for where how I was playing. But that I could also see that because there's a quite a bit of random generation that happens, although it's, it is stat dependent, um, you aren't in direct control of like moving things around in like a battlefield. It is very much a choose one or the other and then we'll see whether or not something works or not works. But it's done by like laws of averages. Um, yeah, I just found that it was so engrossing this game that... I just needed to keep playing and playing and playing and playing, eventually get to the end of like whatever my playthrough was. What I really liked as well is that as you play throughout the first couple of games of this, you're unlocking more and more characters that you can then try and recruit and play with from the very beginning of the game. So yeah, really, really interesting. Other mechanics are hidden behind the scenes, but I feel like I've talked about this game for quite a long time and I don't want to make this feel like complete overload because the game actually, particularly when you play it for the first time, it gives you fair decent tutorials to try and explain what things do do and don't do. The issue is, is that when you play that tutorial once, currently in this game, you can't then go back and re-read that tutorial. You have to go in and manipulate your own save file to pretend it doesn't exist and then it will trigger it all again. Um, I did run into a couple of bugs with the game, which was where I'd open up screens and they wouldn't close again, so I just had to exit out to the main menu and then come back in again. Um, I also experienced a few places where the game would kind of freeze for a few seconds before it loaded in a city for me to then do the espionage stuff, but nothing dramatic at all. Um, so yeah, I think if they 
iron out some of the tutorial stuff so that I could then have that back on and play again. I think that would make it much easier to kind of seep into for Sigma Theory. But I am loving, 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 loving this game. And I think what I will do in a separate video is walk through like an actual game so that you're not seeing bits and bobs going on here and I'll kind of talk over it as I play. I'll probably lose. But I think that'll be really, really informative so that you can see all the different mechanics that are going on behind the scenes because there's an absolute ton. So Sigma Theory, out in early access now. I absolutely recommend it for anyone that really wants to get into a board game turn-based strategy um, for world domination. Why not? Thanks for watching. Bye for now. This channel is just one of my many projects that cover games, music and film. If you enjoy any of these and would consider supporting me to develop further in the future, you can do so by visiting patreon.com forward slash Thank you for your time and for watching the video.